Hi, I'm Danny. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll show you how to test and replace a fuse. Have you ever had something in your car just stop working? Door locks, horn, or most common, the accessory port? A blown fuse could be the reason, but how do you know if it's a blown fuse? In this video, I'll show you how to find, test, and replace the fuse. I'll also explain why they blow. Let's get started. Once the fuse is out of the car, you can give it a visual inspection. You should see a solid wire filament like this. If the filament is broken or melted, the fuse is blown. Most fuses, they have test points on top of the fuse to make fuse testing easy without removing it from the car. I'll show you this in a minute. Sometimes it's hard to see if the wire in the fuse is compromised, especially on the smaller fuses. That's why it's a good idea to use a meter. Make sure your meter is on the ohm scale and the black lead is on common and the red lead is on volt and ohms. Take your leads and you want to test each leg and look at the meter. That's what you should be seeing. If you have a bad fuse, this is what you're going to see, OL. To determine what fuse is bad and where it is, you'll need to find where the fuses are housed. Most cars have at least two fuse and relay boxes. One is under the hood near the battery and the other one is inside the cabin, usually under the dashboard or behind the kick panel or it could be inside the glove box. For the exact location, check the owner's manual or look for a small plastic panel labeled fuses. Once you find the fuse box, you'll see a diagram on the inside of the cover. This will tell you what each fuse controls and where it's located. Now determine where the fuse is for the component that's not working. If it's not listed, it could be tied to a different component. At that point, you may need to check all the fuses. This is a test light. It's great for testing fuses on the car. It's my preferred method. It's small, inexpensive, and it lights up whenever it senses voltage. To use it, one end goes on the negative battery cable or a good ground, and the other end, you're gonna just use the probe to tap the test points on the fuse. So that one's good. That one's good. This one has power here. So the circuit's powered up and no power here. So this is a bad fuse. Now if I come over here to this one, this one has no power here and no power here. That could be because the key ignition isn't on. Some of these only get powered when the ignition is on. This one is okay. And this one is dead also. So these two, if I turn the key on, they should light up. Let me go do that. These fuses that didn't work before, they actually control the headlights and I needed to turn on the headlight switch and now they work just fine. As far as pulling the fuse, I like to use needle nose pliers. But if you're out on the road, the factory actually gives you a fuse remover tool. And you just take this tool you set it on top of that fuse and you pull it right out. They also give you spare fuses. So here's a 20 amp, a 30 amp, 7.5 amp, a 15 amp, and a 10 amp. There's one spare for every size in the fuse box. Once you've determined the fuse is blown, do a visual inspection and then check it with the meter like I showed you earlier. When you replace a fuse, always use a fuse with the same amperage value. Never use a higher rated fuse. It'll cause overheating, wire damage, or even a fire. More on this later in the video. Once the new fuse is in, test the component. If it works, you've solved the problem. So why does a fuse suddenly blow? The fuse is a safety device that protects the circuit. When the current exceeds the fuse's rating, the metal strips inside that fuse melts, stopping the current flow and protecting the electrical wiring and other electrical parts from damage or even fire. When a fuse blows, it's usually due to a short or overloaded circuit. Age and quality of the fuse can also contribute. 
When a fuse keeps blowing, that's a sign of a deeper issue like a shorted wire or a malfunctioning component. So it's important to know that there's two sides to a fuse. There's going to be a power side where it gets power from the battery and there's a fuse side and it's pretty impossible to know by just testing them. So what you actually need to do is pull the fuse. So this is on fuse number seven. I'm going to pull it and then I'm going to check each tab. So this one looks like nothing and this one has power. So this is going to be the power side and this is the circuit side. So this will go into the circuit and this one is the power. This comes from the battery. The reason that's important, if you were going to use this fuse to get power from, you would want to go on the circuit side. That way it protected the circuit. So here's the fuse. And if I was going to come in here, I said this side had the power and this is the circuit side. I would go on the circuit side. So if I was going to power up a, let's say a dash cam and I needed that fuse, this is how I would do it. I would do it at the top of it. And this is kind of a hacked way to do it. They do have a better option with fuses, but that's basically how it would go. Now, if I check my wire, it has 12 volts and it's protected by the fuse. This is a better option. It's a fuse holder. They're not very expensive. So your old fuse comes out You'll put it in here, and then this is going to go on number six. Just plug right in, and then this one we're going to put on number eight. And now everything's protected. Now you might have noticed I was using the power check circuit tester to test the fuses, and it actually works really well. Um, and I said my preferred method was the test light. It's only because it's quicker and easier to grab and test. And that's how you test the fuse. I hope you got something out of today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. I'll leave links to all the parts and tools I used in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.